Yeah. Shalom. So before I get going, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahakwadash Rakah. Double honors to the elders over at the Great Millstone who rule well. Shalom to you. Also, Shalom and double honors to all the elders of the Israelite nation who rule well and are teaching the true doctrine of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, and truth and sincerity. All right. Um, Shalom wa barakim, peace and blessings, that is, to the hopeful elect men out teaching his truth in the four corners of the earth where, he, where we have been scattered, you know, the men of the Israelite nation. And also Shalom to the rest of the one-third men, women, and children of the Israelite nation as well who has forsaken his world and has come back into their true heritage, which is the true way of the true doctrine of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. So before we get going into the lesson, this message is specifically to you so-called black people. You know, that being you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native American Indian people, you are all, in fact, the true Israelites according to um, the Bible, according to true history, all right? So this message is specifically to you. I bid you to come back to your true heritage, learn the ways, you know, and actually follow in um, pursuit in the um, doctrine, all right? Um, so with that said, you know, we go get into the lesson, and this lesson is going to be titled Sharpening the Blade, all right? So um, I got this Google, you know, term pulled up here, and we're gonna read this to get it going, get to get into this lesson. It says sharpen, in this context means to make better. So in the context of sharpening the blade is to make it better, all right? Because if you have a blade, it's ultimately um being used. It has a job to be used, and more than likely, is to be cutting something. That's why, that's the job of a blade is to be sharp, to be used to cut when, when it needs to be. So sharpen in this context means to make better. It's a metaphor that comes from the act of sharpening knives, you know, and it's specifically talking about sharpening the blades because when you're sharpening knives, again, you're sharpening it to make it do its job better. And um, before we get any further, I have to understand that we're, we, we who are inside this truth, we who have Forsaken this world are these blades that we're talking about metaphorically. It says you sharpen a knife when it's when it's dull to make it perform better, you know. So you sh that's when you sharpen a knife when it's dull, you know. You were once in the world at a point you were dull, you know. You didn't even know you were an Israelite. You come into this truth, you know, you're an Israelite, but um, it doesn't stop there. You have to relearn your true history. You have to relearn your heritage. You have to actually apply what you're learning. You know, you have to learn things that you can and can't do. You have to start eat, stop eating certain things and start, um, you know, going about things in a different way than you might have at one point because you were dull. But it doesn't stop at the basic things. You know, a lot of people, they understand they're Israelites and they stop there. You know, they understand, you know, um, a little bit further than that, you know what I'm saying? And it stops, they think it stops there. You know, I just, I, I don't eat pork and I know I'm Israelite. It don't stop there. It's so much deeper, so much more work to be done. Therefore, we have to be constantly sharpened, you know, because we are constantly being used. We're blades. We're constantly being used to cut through these things, to break down these walls, these barriers, these imaginations that have been cast amongst us. So we're, we're, we're really dull, you know? And the whole point of sharpening is to get to that corrected point where we're um acceptable acceptable to the lord on the day of his coming all right so you sharpen a knife when it's dull to make it perform better all right so that's us abounding in the knowledge and wisdom of the heavenly father all right there's even a better word you can use which is home so to home is likewise all right so we go come here real quick i have the definition of sharpen pulled up sharpen and it says, make or become sharp or sharper, right? So you can constantly be sharpened in this truth. You know, that's your studies. That's your diligent search. That's you constantly abounding in this knowledge, you know, what you are um, told to do, commanded to do, you know, so you can be in the right condition, all right, when it's time to be. And these times that are coming, we have times of peril coming. We have times of trouble that's coming. You know, if you don't have this understanding, if you don't have the word, what's going to hold you down? The scriptures say, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. If you don't have that, if your blade isn't sharpened, if you're dull in those times, where's your stability going to be at? 
you know, so you have to be constantly abounding in this knowledge, constantly sharpening that blade, all right? It says improve or cause to improve, all right? So that's that sharpen, you know, which we might come back to, all right? And you got to understand sharpening the blade with that being accurate takes time, you know? You can relate this to anything, relate this to, um, you know, sports, if I'm shooting a ball, it's going to take time for me to become super accurate with it. It takes time to hone those skills. You look at professional athletes, it takes time for a quarterback to be able to throw that ball in a dime every time. It takes time for Stephen Curry to shoot those threes at that accuracy. You know, it took time. He was sharpening that blade, meaning he's probably putting up thousands and thousands of shots throughout his lifetime to a point where, you know, he's, he's dead money. You know what I'm saying? Every time. Same thing with an NFL quarterback, you know, just like to use sports references because they're easy to see, seeing that a lot of uh, our people, you know, you know, attain or apply to these, um, you know, have knowledge within those those fields. Usain Bolt, you know, he had to run at 100, hundreds, maybe thousands of times, you know what I'm saying, to be um, as precisely good at that, to be sharp in it, you see? So... We are those blades, man. We we are to be sharpened. And you got to realize also that the reason that we have this time that we have right now, which is a time period called grace, you know, which is ultimately the Lord's mercy, where we're not being destroyed for our sins right now. You're not supposed to be sitting around not abounding, you know, taking advantage of this time in your own mindset. You're supposed to be taking truly taking advantage of it. You know, and that means you're going to be fulfilling the will of the Lord, doing what he tells you to do, not wasting your time um, trying to come up in your own mind. You see, and that's what most people do. They think it's just, you know, time where a time where they can just do whatever and they don't have to fear the Lord. That's the condition of most people of our nation. They're sitting around and they're not abound in the Lord. They don't know who they are. You know, they're trying to abound within the world of the so-called white man, which isn't ever going to pan out for him. So we're in a time of grace, although we're not getting killed instantly for our sins. You know, it's going to be a time that comes when the Lord returns. He's going to, he's going to, he's, he's going to do so. He's going to pay all these people back, all the wicked ones. So it's our, um, it's our job to be sharpening, sharpening that blade to be correct in the day that the Lord returns. All right. We, we ultimately in preparation for the future promised events, you know, which are the prophecies that are to come, you know, preparing for Jacob's trouble, preparing, preparing for that, um, that sky to crack open, you know, preparing to, um, put these, put these, um, devils, you know, the so-called white man into subjection underneath us, ultimately to eradicate them and all these other nations as well. All right. But, if you're not sharpening your blade and you're remaining dull, you're never going to attain to understanding how, for one, to do these things. But ultimately, you don't even know that, you don't even understand that that exists. It doesn't stop at you knowing you're an Israelite. You know, it, it goes on and on. If that's where you're stuck at, you're considered a dull blade. You need to be sharpened. You have to do a more diligent search, man. All right, so we go um, start here. Not start, but come here to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, if the iron be blunt, all right, and blunt's going into dull. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, when we go into wet, it means to sharpen. All right. So if you're not sharpening the edge of that of that um of that iron, which is the you know, that blade, that knife, that sword, you know, yourself ultimately, then must he put it to more strength. You know, meaning you're gonna have to put in more work. To, to get the job done, you gonna have to apply more strength to make it cut. All right, it says, but wisdom is profitable to direct. It says, but the wisdom that is profitable to direct, it's gonna teach you. You know, the wisdom is gonna teach you. It's gonna teach you that you should be sharpening that blade, that you should be diligently searching, that you should be abounding in these scriptures, and. Ultimately, with you wetting the blade or sharpening it, you're going to spare yourself your strength. You see, you're not going to have to put that extra strength in because that's what it's saying. The, 
if the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, if you don't sharpen the edge, then must he put more strength? You got to put more work into actually getting or performing that job that that, that that blade is meant to do, which is to cut. And to you is to perform this will. You know, cut is an action. Performing is an action. It's all the same thing. You performing in the time where the Lord, you know, has put you in to perform. You know, actually enduring. You know, you're supposed to be able to endure, meaning being hard and being, meaning you're going to make it into the very end, meaning you're going to have to live. You know, some are going to be martyrs. We understand that. But ultimately, you should want to be able to make it through these times that are to come and be deemed worthy, be, be deemed real gold so you can enter into that kingdom. It says, but wisdom is profitable to direct. So also, so not also, but ultimately, Without wisdom and understanding, we can't be profitable in those times of trouble that have come. You're not going to make it into the kingdom because you were dull. You're not going to be able to make it through those times because wisdom, again, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. You didn't have no stability. Why? Because you weren't sharpening yourselves, meaning you're not prepared for these times. You're not prepared for anything. You don't know what's going on, ultimately. You stopped it knowing you were an Israelite. You stopped it... Um, I'm just not eating pork no more, and I know more is a light. Well, you're a dull blade at that point, and you're not useful in that day. Therefore, you're going to be chopped down. You're going to be put out of use. You're not useful. And understand that, you know, these times are coming where you're going to wish that you was taking advantage of this time. So you got to sharpen that blade, you know, and, um, you know, one easy way to sharpen a blade is to be around like-minded people. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, iron sharpeneth iron. So if you're a blade, if you're likening it to iron, another man is likening it to iron. Iron sharpeneth iron. You got to have to, you must be around more iron. Others that are pursuing this truth. Others that, want, that wants to abound in this knowledge and this wisdom. Others that have abounded further than you have in this knowledge and wisdom. Because that's the only way you're going to be sharp. Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend, all right? And only friends are those who know the Lord, man. If you don't know the Lord, you're not considered a friend, man. If you're not following his truth and his true doctrine, you're not considered a friend. So it must be a friend of the Lord to help you sharpen yourselves. Otherwise, you're not going to be sharpened, all right? Meaning you can't be around dull people. If you're around another dull person or a person is not iron at all, not considered iron. What use is that? You're not going to be sharpened out of that. Only iron sharpened iron. All right. So um you'll hop here to Job five and get a few more scriptures we can close out. This is Job chapter five and verse seventeen. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. You know and um, that correction is, if that blade was dull, it became sharp. It got sharpened, you see? So behold, happy is the man whom God corrected because you're going to be happy. Why? Because you're going to be prepared for all that comes your way. And you're going to understand when things do come your way. You're going to understand when chastisement come your way opposed to judgment comes. Well, you know, the water, Abba, the water, Father, thank you. You know, for chastising me, because chastising is just going into correction. You know, the Lord is talking about that chastisement, meaning you're going to go through tribulations. You're going to go through struggles, you know, but if the Lord is not completely destroying you and putting you out, honestly, you should be rejoicing. You should be happy for that, because that means that he wants you to learn. He's giving you an opportunity to learn and be corrected, giving you an opportunity to be sharpened. Although you should be sharpening yourselves at all moments, at all times. You know, that goes into um, examining yourself. Am I sharp or am I dull? You know, and if you're not sharp, you need to be finding the ways to be so. And you find all your ways within the instruction manual, which are these scriptures, man. All of these books, man. And the apocrypha, everything that's here is going to show you the way. So behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. You know, because you're going to be chastised, ultimately you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested to see if you're sharp. 
You see? And if you're dull, you're not going to rejoice in a time when you're being chastised because you're not going to understand what's going on. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty, you know, because ultimately that's good. You know, he's testing to see how sharp you are. For he make it sore and bind it up. He wound it and his hands make whole. So he'll knock you down and just bring you right back up. You know? Why? Because you're sharpened. You know, you're a proven blade. You got to prove these things. That's what, um, you know, I'll just keep it here, you know? But I was about to say King David, he didn't, he didn't prove that, that armor that Saul tried to give him, you know? So he... He didn't use it, but ultimately that's how the Lord is. You know, He's gonna He's gonna try you, therefore He's gonna chasten you. But if you're a sharp blade, you know you're gonna keep standing. You're gonna keep continue on. He shall deliver. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. That was those troubles we was talking about. These times that are to come, these bad times that are in front of us that you need to be ready for, that you need to be sharpened for that correction, being corrected. Because if you're dull, you're not gonna be delivered in the six troubles. Right? Yeah, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. And that seven is just going into completion. You know? That time. That time where um, the trouble are at its max. When the devil comes completely down. When they're rounding up, brothers. When they're putting people in these camps. These um, these um, FEMA camps and stuff that we know are to come, man. When they're forcing you to, beyond forcing you to take that poison. Six troubles is... The beginning but when that seven trouble that complete trouble comes is when all hell is completely broke broke loose and the so-called white man the devil is going to come down with great wrath man and it's coming you can see it verse 20 says in famine he shall redeem thee from death you know we're not going to see the scourges we're not going to be hungry in a day you know we need food and ultimately it's because we're a sharpened blade He's going to redeem us. The Lord is going to be working with you. And that's because he's going to deal with those blades that are proven, that are sharp, that are ready, you see, that are stable. And in war from the power of the sword, you see, we're going to be able to battle against the sword. And the sword is the so-called white man, you know, the wicked man who's controlling this world right now. You know, the power of the sword is the power of the so-called white man, the power of his military, the power of his words, his propaganda, his machines, his... Anything that he has coming at you, that venom that he's trying to put in you, he's going to protect us from that, from, for being sharp, for sharpening ourselves, and constantly being ready for this war that's to come. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. See, we're not going to be lost in the words of these devils, man. We're not going to be succumbed to their, you must get this vaccination, or we, we, know, the re we know reality, man. We're going to stay steadfast in his truth, man. And we're going to rely on the Lord. We're going to rely on Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai to deliver us from these times. And we're not going to be confused by all of the um, the lies and words or anything that he puts out towards us. Because we know we have these scriptures and they warn us, they pre-warn us. Therefore, we stay sharpening his blade so we're prepared for these times. It says, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. And that's clear. Why? Because we're sharp. We know what's going on. We sharpen our blade, man. And us sharpening our blade is us being in these scriptures, abounding. Constantly, constantly, um, you know, um, examining ourselves to see what we need to improve on. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. You see, because these times are coming where um, the only thing that is going to allow you to survive is having true faith in the Lord, man. And we can see these times coming, man. You can see, um, you know, through the earthquake that hit Haiti, man. You can see with this, you know, Katrina basically came back with this um, hurricane that's, you know, ripping apart Louisiana right now, man. You know, and these are just the beginning of things that are to come. Things are going to get worse. So we're going to need to be sharp and to be prepared in the times that we're um, slowly, I mean, sh shortly coming into, you know, it's right up the street. So we have to build this, um, this, this, this mental fortitude to continue in this faith and to continue sharpening ourselves and continue preparing ourselves for the day of the Lord, you know, because it's not going to be light. It's going to be something that, you know, ultimately we can't imagine, but just understand that those times are to come. And when you're reading about them and you're getting 
what's coming and you're giving um, the counsel on what to do in these times, you're going to be able to stand. But if you're not doing so and you're being dull, you know, and you're okay with being dull, and you're not um, abounding in this knowledge and wisdom and sharpening yourselves, you know, you know, you're going to be in a horrible case that day, man. You know, and um, we go get this real quick and I'll close out. It's longer than I thought it would be too, but, you know. So, Cyrac chapter 9, man. Salakia, second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 9. Verse 7, it says, And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. You know, we believe, so therefore we stay sharp. We kept sharpening that blade, man. We never let it go dull. Shall be preserved from the said perils, those perils that we were just talking about, and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. We're going to actually see the salvation. We're going to see the Lord actually come save us and actually be um, there in that day and be because we pre we were prepared, meaning we stayed sharp in that blade, you know, never allowed ourselves to become dull and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning, you know. Ultimately, it's an elect thing, man. The Lord's going to choose who He has His eyes on. He's going to choose who He chooses, man, and that'll be the elect, the one third of the Israelite nation who is, you know, written to be saved out of the destruction that's come. And ultimately, they're going to be sharp blades. It says, then shall they be, shall, shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. They abused this time of grace. They didn't take advantage of the time to stay sharp. They didn't even care about not being sharp, man. They was okay with being dull, you know, or they just never seen it coming because the Lord, you know, made it that way. And they that have cast them away, despitefully shall dwell in torments. You see, you're going to dwell in term, torments. For such as their, in their life have received benefits and have not known me. You see, you never came to this word. You never even tried to be sharp, man. You were a dull person forever. And they that have loathed my law, while yet had liberty, you see, while you were in this grace, time of grace, man, that you should be abounding in this knowledge, being prepared, getting prepared. While you got the liberty to do so. And when, as yet, place of repentance was open unto them. You see, this place of repentance is open right now. You can turn back from your ways. Come back to the Lord. Start sharpening that blade. Get as sharp as you possibly can in the time being. See, but it says understood not, but despised it. They despised this time. Therefore, they out the clubs. They partying. They BSing. You know, they don't care about what's going on. You know, you're ultimately dead already. You despise this time. Verse 12 is where we go close out. It says, the same must know it after death by pain. All right? Then that's how you're going to get it if you're not constantly sharpening the blade. If you remain a dull blade, you're going to know the Lord after death by pain. And those who are constantly sharpening the blade and preparing themselves and readying themselves for the times to come and knew that the Lord you know, wasn't playing around this whole time. And these words have been available for you to read, learn, and accept, and to abound in, and to prepare yourself within, you know. If you don't do so, the same shall know it after death by pain. You're going to know this truth, man. And you're going to um, accept it. But after death by pain. All right, so that was, um, that's the lesson. So sharpening the blade, man. Um... I'm going to just say, Lord willing, this was edifying. Um, I'm going to say on the last note, you know, make sure you sharpen that blade. But with that said, shalom.